with Kayla and Jim and welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. Today we got something very exciting we're going to talk about and that is the Storm Prediction Center's convective outlook potential. And so it they that eh, 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 eh. takes seven <clears throat> short circuit. And so they what? What do they do? You're leaving us in suspense. What's happening? But before we get started, before we get started, make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe down below so you never miss another Meteorology Monday. So first of all, you're probably asking yourself, for those who are not meteorologists, or maybe if you're not even from this country, you might exactly. be going, what, what is SPC the or the Storm Prediction Center? That, well, I'm glad that you asked. The Storm Prediction Center is the center where they predict storms. <laughs> I mean, I, I see no fault. <laughs> He's correct. So basically, the Storm Prediction Center is a branch of NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration here in the United yep. States. And their primary objective is to forecast and issue watches for uh, severe weather, specifically yep. tornadoes, severe thunderstorms, high Tornado, wind events. Wind. And uh, I believe they started getting into winter weather as well in the, over the past X amount of years because some of the winter weather events would get pretty intense. So they got involved in that as well. That is what they do. Now, where are they located? Where are they? Let's see. The Storm Prediction Center, which predicts tornadoes, winds, hail. Where was, uh, uh, I'm going to guess Go somewhere Go ahead. in the dead center of Montana. <laughs> It's in the, the, the middle of Tornado Alley, right? Norman, Oklahoma. Norman, Oklahoma. And for those that don't know where Norman, Oklahoma is... Dead Center Tornado Alley. <laughs> Kayla's gonna <laughs> pop up a map right now and it's gonna zoom right into Norman, Oklahoma. And that's where the Storm Prediction Center is. Editing Kayla, don't forget to put in a map and then zoom into Norman, Oklahoma. Here we go. Convective Outlook Risk Category. So the first risk level at the lowest is going to be general thunderstorms. Followed by marginal risk. Followed by slight risk. Followed by moderate risk. No. No, it's not. Followed by enhanced risk. Followed by moderate risk. Followed by high risk. <laughs> So let's do a deeper dive into deeper what dive. each one of these risk levels means. Yeah, so I mean, what even makes SPC go, oh, we should issue a risk? Like, what are we looking for here? So let's start at the lowest level. Lowest and then level. And we'll work our way to the maximum excitement. So general thunderstorms is basically an area that they've identified where I think 10% or more of the coverage is just gonna be your general thunderstorms. General thunderstorms. And they do put out the little asterisk there that says, Says, beware all thunderstorms can produce lightning and you know potential for some hazards so just because it's a general thunderstorm risk doesn't mean that absolutely nothing's gonna happen in terms of severity moving on up to marginal risk now we have an area where SPC is like, okay, we're gonna have some severe thunderstorms, but they're probably not gonna be very long lived. Eh, they might not show up everywhere. Nothing's really that organized, but there's more of a risk than just general thunderstorms. Next level is slight risk. Now slight risk, again, now we go up another level. Another so level. the intensity ratchets up a little bit more, not widespread intense and not widespread coverage, but the coverage has increased some right. over the marginal, and the intensity of some of the storms has increased a little bit more. Yep. So, you know, they put it into a slight risk. And this is the category where, as a storm chaser, you're kind of like, okay, okay, something might happen today. Something might be worth chasing today. Yep, that's usually the threshold for most meteorologists get excited and they go, yeah. oh, we're in a slight risk, so. Like, I ain't getting out of bed mm. for nothing less than a slight risk. <laughs> Next level up is the enhanced risk and this is in between our slight risk and our moderate risk. Now, we just added this enhanced risk mm, five, ten years ago, five-ish years ago, but this is a recent addition because slight risk, as we talked about, was kind of like, okay, something might happen, whereas, as you're gonna see in a minute here, moderate is much more severe, so we added this kind of middle ground instead of being like, ah, or eh, we kind of added in the middle here. <laughs> That's right. And as meteorologists, you know, sometimes we go, slight risk, but all the parameters are coming together, yeah. right? This should be moderate. Right. And, and so, you know, it, it wouldn't get to moderate, but it would still be quite the 
you know, yeah. the radar would fill in quite a bit. But then there's times where it's like, well, okay, moderate is issued, but you know, some of it didn't quite pan out right. you know, as forecasted. So it, this enhanced category was a nice middle ground that yeah. they created yeah. between slight and moderate. And within this enhanced risk area, we have more long-lived storms, a little bit more intense storms. You might have a few really severe ones mixed in there. Stuff is happening when you see an enhanced risk most of the time. The next one is moderate risk. Now this is where meteorologists get very excited. Okay. Lord have mercy, we're almost a high risk. We're at moderate. <laughs> we're Something's at moderate. happening. So this is widespread, a lot of intense storms, a lot of coverage of intense storms. Strong winds. That's right. So this covers a good amount of area where they feel that all the parameters are coming together that when things start yep. to fire or if things move in, it will have that moderate risk. Yep. Widespread intense and yep. longer lived activity. We've saved the best for last. Here and it is. that is, she's going to give it to us. Ready? The high risk, the top tier, the worst of the worst, the most intense storms, the category that gets issued the least when you see one of these. It's an, oh my gosh, this doesn't happen, but maybe once, twice a year. One of those situations. And it covers, again, more numerous intense storms, yep. long live, definitely yep. very high confidence. They only put it out when their confidence is very, very high for yep. a lot of these parameters to come along. And usually with these high risks and, and moderate risks too, but usually with the high risk, you are pretty much almost guaranteed a particularly yep. dangerous situation statement yep. um, in the mesoscale discussion where they talk about long lived, intense, Tense, long tracked tornadoes on the ground, very, very uh, large hail, widespread damaging winds, yep. probably greater than 70, 80 miles an hour. That covers a large region, like half a state, you know, it's very widespread. Yeah, when that gets issued, uh, meteorologists, you know, it's hard for them to sit in their chairs. Yeah. They went all the way out in the field <laughs> trying to get there. So, on one hand, the meteorologists get excited when we start seeing slight enhanced but definitely moderate yeah. and, and high but the flip side to that is the realism that this is people's lives this is people's property you know this is going to be a dangerous event you know hopefully everybody gets through okay but chances are that there's going to be lives lost yeah. there's going to be property damage with a high risk because this is this is some pretty serious stuff a lot of times when you see a high risk, it goes hand in hand with a historical event. Like last week's video, we talked about the super outbreak of April 2011. That was a high risk day and it went down in the history books, so they don't issue high risks lightly. And the cool thing about it is this is what they are tasked to do. So the Storm Prediction Center will go ahead and they will forecast for severe weather across the United States. And then what they'll do is they will issue their convective outlooks. And then you have certain forecasters that have certain responsibilities. Yep. Some issue the convective outlooks. And then when they see an area of interest that's actually, you know, hmm, you know the slight risk mm -hmm. area enhanced or whatever, mm -hmm. you have your mesoscale meter meteorologists, your mesoscale forecasters, right. and they put out the mesoscale discussion. And yep. they focus a little bit more, so it might be a state or two or, or a quadrant of the country. And that's where they get into a little bit more detail in their forecast yep. philosophy, and they kind of hone the, the convective outlook a little bit. And then the next step is the possibility of issuing watches and warnings. The yep. Our watches at that point, the mesoscale discussion will say, hey, possible watch coming out here in a few hours. Keep your eyes open. And then you'll have the watch meteorologist that'll uh, start to look at things and go, we're gonna go ahead and issue a watch. Conditions are coming together in the next few hours. We need to make everyone aware. That's where you get those parallelograms, the watch boxes. And then there will be uh, coordinated efforts between them and the local National Weather Service offices. Uh, the Weather Service offices from that point will pick it up. They'll monitor the storms across the region and they see something that reaches severe criteria or is approaching severe criteria. The local National Weather Service office will issue the warnings. One thing that's special about the day one convective outlook compared to days two through eight is on day one we also have three other little tabs that pop up we have the tornado potential we have the wind potential and we have the hail potential so on top of the pretty colors that pop up on the convective outlook map you also have colored in little hatched areas for the different ones tornadoes hail and wind and these are like two percent for tornadoes but 15 percent chance of hail and a 10 percent chance for wind 
region. And these parameters are hail up to an inch in diameter, winds up to, I believe it is 58 miles per hour, which is 50 knots. At or exceeding. At yeah. or exceeding. 50 yeah. knots. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the threshold there. Mm -hmm. And tornadoes of any kind. And they use those parameters and they're able to crunch the numbers and come out with those percentages. They don't yeah. just come up with them randomly. They right. actually have thresholds or criteria that actually dictate, you know, when you got this, here's this value. And then they sum all that up and that's where they come out to the total percentage, which helps them decide whether it's a moderate risk, a high risk or an enhanced risk, yeah. something along that line. So out of the three parameters, the tornado, the wind and the hail, they weigh the tornado parameter a little bit more. For so, obvious reasons. <laughs> that's right. So if you have, for example, a day where there's a 15% chance of tornadoes, they will label that as enhanced risk or, or whatever category that falls in. But for wind and hail, if it's 15%, they might say it's spike risk. Right. And again, they have all these thresholds established uh, yeah. based on their research. With wind and hail, the percentages need to be bumped up a little bit more in order to reach those higher risk categories. But with right. tornadoes, the percentage can be lower to reach those same higher level categories. Just because the nature of tornadoes and hail. They're a little bit more damaging most of the time than wind. <laughs> but of course, I mean, you might have a derecho go through, in which case the wind potential will be much higher and, right. and the risk will be higher because of that as well. That's right. So it all depends on the event. So the convective outlooks, as Kayla talked about earlier, there's day one through day eight. Day one is broken up into the three individual tornado, wind, and hail. They also have categorical, which they sum up all three and put it on one map. But day two through day eight, they sum up everything everything yeah. and and put it as one map just because yeah. forecasting past 24 hours yeah to pinpoint something at this point in time it's a little risky to say you know oh this tor tornado parameter has got such a, a yeah. higher risk and so right now instead of breaking it up into all those details they leave that for day one where the confidence is much higher and then day two through eight everything is just summed up together the total percentage yeah generally the rule of thumb is for men scale, which is like the smaller half a state kind of scale, is saved for 24 hours in advance. Anything past that, it's kind of like, well, oh, you're predicting an F5 to come through yeah. on Tuesday. It's like, mm. <laughs> A little Tuesday, far in advance. Tuesday at 5 13 p.m. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like it's, it's like, Sunday. It's like, really? <laughs> like you can say that maybe there's a tornado, so I mean, we can put maybe an enhanced risk out there, but uh, you yeah, know. Mm. So, how about is would this another get, quiz? Would you, <gasps> get, <laughs> would you get excited, knowing what you know now, would you get excited for a severe weather event? Yes. If there was a moderate risk put out three days in advance. Okay, so that is the second from the greatest level. Three days in advance. For perspective, it takes about three days for a storm system to cross the US. So this storm isn't even on the continent and they're like, it is going to rain chaos in three days. Uh, yes, I would be excited as a storm chaser to see moderate three days out. For them to put moderate three days out, they gotta have such a high confidence that things are gonna come together. They're like, everything will happen all at once. We yeah. are positive. Now, there are times where they will issue, let's say three days from now, they'll issue an enhanced risk. And then as time goes on, the perimeters don't quite come together. So the following day, they might shrink it back to a slight risk. And then the day after that, they might keep it a slight or even bump it down to a, a marginal. Just because, you know, as things unfold and as the, the models are, are, you know, getting closer and closer to the event and, and you're looking more at the satellite and radar and seeing how things are coming together, they tweak it. Just like the flip side to that is just as valid. For example, they might issue a marginal risk three days out and then as the parameters come together, bump it to slight risk on day two and then day one, you know, they might make it enhanced or keep it at slight. So there you have it. There is a look into the SPC convective outlooks. If you guys are more of a visual learner, we have blogs written out just about all of these convective outlooks and potentials and models and everything on our website, which will be linked down below, as well as the SPC site if you guys want to go out there and start messing around and play around with the convective outlooks for the next few days. Again, make sure that you hit that like button. And if you want to follow more of our weather adventures, follow us over here on Instagram and Facebook. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And may your enjoyment of this video be high risk.
Next level is gonna be? Oh, hang on, I was making the weirdest face. 